Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap! My name is Pixorifs, our writer is Loy XP, the earthquakes are getting more noticeable, and the moon is now very big. I don't know, man, that thing looks huge. It's an average week on the Hermitcraft server, which means there are three to five cosmic level disasters happening at any given time. Along with increased tectonic activity and celestial bodies doubling in size, we have a cameo by Terraria's Eye of Cthulhu, the ground itself screaming at you, and waterfalls made out of zombie pig demons from the depths of heck. And this is two seasons after they built Area 51 in Minecraft. So before the Elder Gods rise from their slumber and boil the seas with maddening vapours, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with Doc M, who's responsible for at least two of the brain-melting occurrences of this week, because he has not been idle following the Tower of Boats being dropped on Octagon, and this week he and Rendog return them, with two screaming goats riding in each vessel. Oh, oh my goodness, what hit me, dude? It ran off. Oh, he hit me. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the way to get him. Just stand still, they will attack you. Having apparently bred up this army of operatic Caprinet overnight, the Octagon duo stuffs them into every corner, basement, truck bed, and crawl space in Botum Town. The result being that anywhere you walk, the floor shouts at you in protest. <laughs> let's just make sure, let's just make sure, Doc. <laughs> it's everywhere, man. <laughs> What is happening right now? Satisfied with that, Doc returns to his usual technical wizardry, building up a nether roof gold farm which uses portal mechanics to warp piglins of all kinds directly into the overworld. It needs two people to activate it, but the resulting piglin waterfall brings in enough gold that he needs a Psycraft storage system to stash it all. And perhaps the resulting crash in gold prices will encourage everyone to invest in derp coin. <laughs> all right. Oh my goodness, dude, what the... Okay, dude. Okay, this is hurting hurting the soul, <laughs> hurting the brain, hurting the ears. I got a headache. The Master of Coin himself does show up to finalize the absorption of Octagon into the Emporium Empire. Azumavoid stops by both to apologize for placing all the boats Doc broke back and to figure out an ATM designed to be installed at the Megastore. Luckily, there's plenty of crawl space the redstone could occupy, and X quickly puts together a fun design for the Diamond to Derp exchange, as well as a redstone repeater piano for some reason. Making my way downtown intensifies. That sounds much nicer. The acquisition brings out another piece of lore. Evil Azuma's zapping powers appear to be fading for one reason or another. They've already gone from green to red in the past few videos, and now the lightning just doesn't strike out at all. Given the evidence, we think someone should put him back on the charger. Oh, well, what happened there then? Has he developed some sort of resistance? Does the Axolotl know of my plans? Why am I talking to myself? Oh god, I'm so lonely. Anyhow, we would be remiss not to point out that the tech for the exchange apparatus came from an attempted bubble column squid farm. X also invents himself a copper placing and harvesting unit for an area by the drowned farm, since he's been AFKing there a lot anyway, and it wouldn't hurt to have freshly oxidized blocks. Now, a squid farm design that didn't have to work is iJevin's aquarium for his pet axolotls Pickle and Mashed Potato. The spacious area with wall-high windows is dug up on the rim of Jevin's slime pit swamp base, but naturally the game reads it as a cave and it starts spawning glow squid in there whom the pets instantly start hunting. I think we're going to have a lot of natural spawns in this place because there's already two axolotls over here. Three. Wow. Okay, so Pickles is going to have a whole family. A more intentional farm is the Bamboo Auto Harvester, based on slime block flying machines and based also in general. The supply of half a stick is meant to feed into the sizable furnace array contained within the well-decorated side hallway of the slime pit, which, now looking at it, might actually be pretty good for fitting the moon in it. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Green and Mumbo are right. The moon is definitely getting bigger. The earthquakes have even reached XB Crafted out at Horsehead Farms. Although he can't hold them responsible for the new weathered look of Hypno's Blacksmith Forge, he's been doing that himself. Um, I want this building to look older than that building. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. In between that and planting some fresh grass and azalea, the place looks a little more lived in. So much so that iJevin wants to live in it. When Jevin comes around with his mystery shulker box game, XB goes all in and offers Jevin a place to live inside the giant white horse head. Their heads are a little empty as it is, so I feel Perfect. like <laughs> they could Perfect. use a little something in there. <laughs> yeah. 
It's not the only renovation job in Jevin's diary this week, although the other one is Joe Hills calling in the IOU he bought at the Horsehead auction. So what goes around comes around. Oh, definitely. And like I said, if you need any help with your base, you know, even though you don't have an IOU for me, I am always happy to help. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go back to nature now. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> The work itself is actually fairly painless, as Joe has been juggling too many tasks at his and Zombie Cleo's castle build, and he just needs someone to crenellate for him. Luckily after that, Zombie Cleo has already swooped in and taken care of several other jobs, like the roofs and towers, although when the two meet up to review the progress, it turns out Cleo's version of the papercraft model wasn't aware it had a tallest tower. Okay, this is, this is a success, we did a thing. Yeah, it, it's like <laughs> months of work are finally coming together. The finished castle looks dramatic enough to host a few guests in, although it wouldn't be a castle without its fair share of death traps. Oh, I've got an IOU for Gem and Pearl as well. We can make everyone turn up. <laughs> we, can get, we can get five people here for a party. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the most depressing episode ever. And speaking of death traps, Cubfan135 proposes a Drip Leaf Spleef tournament. All members are invited to sign up for the full damage chaos at the enormous golden drip leaf positioned obnoxiously in front of the spleef box, with a borderline arbitrary entry fee and some very solid bragging rights on the line. In the meantime, Cub continues the magical desert project and spreads the occasional amethyst around the red of the canyon. The custom biome gains extra atmosphere with the introduction of petrified trees, made literally by swapping blocks of actual furs with dead coral and basalt. That's not to mean the base is bereft of green entirely. Under the ground, Cubfan puts together a small getaway with flush away crop farms and an animal of every kind. We now have the bok 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 bok. We got the oink 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 oink. We got the ba. Got the moo. And of course, we got the nah. Well, maybe not every every kind. Yeah, let's talk about them bulls. After last week's total eclipse of a boat, the Botum crew left at the Big Eyes shores, a revengeance was well in order. To his credit, Grian did try and help blow up a large part of it, although whether the chaotic chunks left over from that will be easier to clean up than the full platform would have been is up in the air, just like said chunks. It is a convenient coincidence then that Grian's project for the week is finishing up the storefronts within the Magic Shop Lane, which we now regret not nicknaming Stardew Alley instead. Grian ponders on how to incorporate a better storage area into one of the decorative shops, while it turns out Doc M has already incorporated goat silos into his functional one. Uh, there's, there's one scream that they do that just sounds like a human. At the very least, the screaming goats drop the most hilarious heads, which really just made everyone screaming at the Botum meeting that much more appropriate. This yep. is the best thing yep. ever. Um, right. So Mum Mumbo's got a made the meeting room. Do we? Yep. What do, do we address my idea first? Or oh 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 oh! It just spat <laughs> something at it. Yes, the employee juggler finally gets a use, and in the ensuing reshuffle, the group appoints the robot Mumbo built of himself, the CEO, instead of him. Pity he'll have to surrender the license plate off of the hat Scar gifted him so soon. <laughs> you gave me a wing! I'm now aerodynamic! <laughs> Look at the back. Look at the license plate on the back. Oh. <laughs> Scar, I vote for the machine. This is, this is the best thing that's ever happened. Another valuable change the group agreed on is to streamline Botum's marketing and rebrand it into a company name, BTM, now that the previous name has been sullied enough with their aggressive advertisement tactics. The new one came with an aggressive creeper instead. I propose we simplify to Botum. There's a creeper! <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't me! Moon has barely recovered from the last pranks on Botum, cleaning up the fake bedrock from her storage and using her newfound expertise to restore the Botum hole as well, when the next wave of pranks strikes, and she's caught up between finding hidden goats and running from the rampaging ravagers. But she's also been spending her time tying the Giga base together, installing a scenic waterfall under the bridge between her mountain and scars, and of course, giving a llama statue a shower while she's at it. I think this really, really shows the importance of greenery and just trees in general to a landscape, and um, I'm in love. 
I'm in love, that's it. We've also seen Pearl's attempts at stealing Impulse's redstone box in the past, although the latest attempt Impulse caught on camera wasn't quite as successful. Which means he was still able to complete the bamboo farm he was building to fuel his cactus auto smelter. Here, so I think there's what, five slices of this happening? And that's gonna be a lot of bamboo collected here. He's among the first to notice the goat noises coming from the floor beneath his candy shop, although there's plenty more screaming to be had at the Botan meeting and the subsequent Ravager fiasco. Oh gosh. Right, my stuff. No! Oh, my stuff is free. Oh! Okay! okay. Yeah. Keep it busy, I keep it busy, keep okay. it busy! Busy. I got a few here. At least after all this, he's got a few more mob heads, some green dye to sell at his shop, and a good view of the moon. A view which, for a while, was blocked off by a giant chthonic eyeball, seemingly with arms and legs. And why are you guys uh, all pranking each other, by the way? I come back and there's just, there's war, there's oh, pranking oh, war yeah. going on. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you better wait. Investigating this Alolan variant Mike Wazowski, Pearl, Grian, Impulse, and Scar quickly discover that just like its Terraria counterpart, the thing means no good. It's been put there by B00 and Tango, who managed to lace it with 60 or so Ravagers and a tricky wireless redstone contraption. Tango built a raid farm just for this project, and to add icing to the cake, had renamed all of the Illager Beasts with Big Eyes ad slogans. This is gonna be devastating, this Tango. Is this is it, this is the prank of the season if it, if it, if it unfolds as we hope. <laughs> Though once the monsters descend down onto Botum in a single graceful cluster, the server mates may be too busy to read the chat. Dude! Wait, are they dying straight away? <gasps> oh no, Grian! Oh, he's coming so after me! Oh no! Needless to say, this version of Decked Out is a tad less subtle, but it still makes for a fun spectator sport. Oh my god, there's ravages everywhere. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Run, Scar. Run. Oh my god, this is the best. And while Mumbo also has his doubts about the moon, he's managed to avoid most of the consequences that have befallen Botum this far, which is good for him because he's ethically opposed to fighting ravagers. Instead, he raises a stylized temple statue atop his mountain, dedicated to the concepts of peace, love, and plants, at least some of which were used in the construction of additional rope bridges. Dude, yep. this place is amazing. Like, I, how do you t how do you call yourself not a builder anymore? You can't you you can't you can't call yourself not a builder anymore, Mumbo. Scar, you're making me blush, dude. I can't I can't be taken. Look. But he's done all this as a pig wearing a potato on its head, and apparently he's had enough of that. So he invokes his contract for Grian's soul after he can remember which chest he put it in. Dropping Grian into a room where he has to make a decision between giving up his soul willingly or fighting his way out, both options lead to Grian being crushed slowly, like a French press. This You're is squeezing the soul out of me. <laughs> yeah, it's like a juicer. Once the process is complete, Mumbo is back to his old human self again. Although he hasn't got the food references out of his head quite yet. Oh, are you? Do I do I look like a human again? Oh, oh wait, wait, oh, do another twelve for me. Awful. Thankfully, before the metamorphosis, science got a good look at the inner workings of the plant man, as Zeraf invited Mumbo, still a potato at that point, to partake in his signature psychological saw traps. I don't know, I, that, that, seemed, that seems slightly dangerous. Also, I spelt my name wrong. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> the highlights include the beloved sport of hide and seek exactly in the spot where B-dubs did. Every time, every time, I see a cod head sticking out. A pig with superpowers, which may or may not have been foreshadowing. And he is very stationary. That's a superpower. Yep. And a fan fiction writing session that our writer will not be illustrating lest this episode comes out a week late. And he said to the super pig, I know you are normally stationary, but you can begin to move and traverse the land. And that's about it for this week's recap. Our writer is Loy XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.